Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to create a reactive GUI. Now, in AutoHotKey, GUIs are easy, which you can see the, the course we have above my head here. Uh, it's a great course, it's solid, uh, building GUIs are easy. However, making a reactive GUI, things that update, why don't you have, Isaiah, why don't you show us a little bit of the issue that- The often... issue that we're having. So yeah, so this is very common and the problem is, uh, so, Say, for example, you have a GUI like this, and when you, uh, if it is resizable, when you resize, none of the controls react to the sizing that you're doing. Now, the problem is it that- It didn't update on my screen. All oh, right, so it seems to that when I let oh, go I... of it, right? Okay, so I have to let go of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, it's just because we're sharing the screen. Cool. But in general, what happens is when you, are, when you do resize a window, the controls do not react to it by default. And of course it shouldn't because what happens is that I don't, the program doesn't know how you want it to react. Sure. So for example, in this case, we have a few edit boxes. When I drag this, do you want the all the edit boxes to get bigger? Or, and I was just uh, telling that to you, when we drag this window, you want these two boxes to get bigger but this one on the right side, you don't want it to get bigger. You just want it to be pushed to the side. Right. So again, our There's hotkey that. doesn't know, our hotkey doesn't know how you want to update the controls. And for that reason, um, that you have to do yourself manually. <laughs> it's not, uh, extremely hard, but it's a lot of work depending on how many controls you have and which ones you want to move and, you know, so on. So what I'm going to do right now is just show you how you can go ahead and, uh, do that um, and I'm just going to use my my tool here and notice that my other tool my other window whenever I resize my box here resizes with it but notice that the buttons don't change the sizing right. they just change positioning and again that's the point of why AutoHotKey doesn't do that by itself is because you have to choose what to do <laughs> in each of the single cases so what I'm going to do let me start with a very simple GUI let's go ahead and start with um, Agree, and I'm going to set an option to it is the resize option. And the reason for that is that if you do not have a Windows that is resizable, then you're not going to be able to use what I'm going to show you. Um, as soon as you create a GUI or you set options like this, you can go ahead and get its handle because it gets created right away. So I'm going to get the handle right away and put it in a variable. I'm just going to name it uh, handle for now, HWMD. And the way to get that is win exist. If you call the WinExist function like this, it would right away grab the handle number of this GUI. So that's where we go. Now let's add a an edit button. Um, uh, edit control, right? So let's start with that and let's start with 200 units. And yeah, let's go ahead and GUI show it. Uh, let's make the GUI, I don't know, 400 units and that's it, return. So th this is what we're gonna get. We should get this little window here. It is resizable, but again, nothing is moving, right? So that's what's out. going on, right? There you go. Now, all oh, right, yeah, true. <laughs> I have to let go of it. Now, the funny thing is I want the this control to react to the movement of my window. So what you're gonna use is a specific label that you can call that gets called automatically when you resize a window and it is called GUI size. Okay. Now this label, depending on, on if you have, uh, named windows, um, it, it works a little bit differently, but if you do not have a name for your window, just GUI size is okay. I will show you what to do in the other section. Every time you, you move or resize the window, this, um, uh, label gets executed automatically. And what I'm going to do right now, let's just start with getting the current position of the window. So we get position um, and I'm going to get uh, Windows X, Windows Y, Windows uh, Width, and Windows Height. So there are many other options that you can get, but for now, I'm just interested in the X, Y position and Width and Height and they're all one after the other like this. I just got the position of the window into variables, and now let's go ahead and tooltip them. 
Um, so let's go ahead and say window positioning, and I'm gonna put it in new line. And I'm gonna say, you know, uh, X would be this one. Um, y would be this one. Uh, width is going to be this one. And height would be that one. So now, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set a timer. Uh, let's call it tooltip off uh, for three seconds. And what it's going to do is that after three seconds, it would just go ahead and turn off my tooltip. That's all. Now, um, when I run this, you will see a tooltip where my mouse is, right? Because when the window is created the first time, this uh, routine gets called automatically. So that's something that is going to happen as soon as the window is created. But now whenever I um, move my window, you will see my tooltip here updating. Uh, unfortunately, I would have to be letting go of it. But if I, if you are uh, in your computer when you try it, you will notice that the, um, the, the tooltip will be updating as you move the mouse, right? So uh, as you're dragging it, it's going to be updated. Now, now that I got the positioning of my main window, now I should also get the position of the control. That's what I mentioned. If you have hundreds of controls, you will have to get the control positioning um, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, so having a loop that does that is my way to go. But let's just go ahead and do GUI, uh, control oh, what, get. Put that in the class also to make it easier to track all that stuff or no? Um, That's right. No, I, I wouldn't actually do it in a class right now because Auto Hotkey version one does not have the the uh, GUI class, the GUI object. In version two, you do, and then it is way easier because you just re you just refer to the position of the thing right there. So, but in this case, no. What I would do is just loop through it, like for for con for control in. So for each control in, and I would name my controls here. For example, the E control, I would just do that. And for each of them, then I would just right. really control get, you know, some, some information and I would look through all of them. I just make an array with all my controls and that's it. So I do not have to be writing a lot of lines for it. Right, but, we have yeah. One. Yeah. right. but that now in this case, um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my uh, control, right? And what I'm going to grab from it is the position. And uh, let me, yeah. So my control here, when you use this command, the control get position, what is gonna happen is that all your positioning is going to be saved into, um, uh, so let me put here control, the name of the control, right? But then it is gonna be, uh, let me put the X here, it's gonna be X. So the name of the control, X. And for the Y, it would be the same Y, and then it would be the Y, and so on. So it's going to be kind of like a pseudo pseudo object in there, um, in which you are just referring to each of the variables that were were assigned. This one is going to be W, and this one is going to be H, and there you go. So now I should get two different information in the in my tooltip. One of them should be, and if you can see down here, one of them is for the window, one of them is for the window, and the other one is for the control. Now that you have that information and, and you can kind of like move it, now I can use another control, another, um, uh, how do I say, uh, command, which is GUI control. And I, I can move a control now by using the GUI control move. I put the name of my control, right? And now I tell it how to move. Usually you would say X or, you know, X 10 or Y 20. You can put the values like that. But as I want to do math, I'm going to force an expression here. And for the width, because that's the one that I'm going to be working with, I want to do some math. I want to grab the width of the window and from the width of the window, I'm going to su subtract 100 pixels. And that, what it's going to do is that my 
my oh. edit control is always going to be yeah. the, the, the same size. Uh, sorry, 100 pixels less than the size of the window. Yeah. doesn't matter how much I move it. Right. So when I run that away, now notice that I'm 100 pixels away from this. And when I move it, it will actually update it to match the width of my window. And again, I could definitely move the positioning as well. Sure. So if I if if I make the height, you see this height, I could make it so that when you put it down like that, it would move the control down as well. Right. And again, the only thing that I have to do is just some little bit of math here saying like the X or no, well, the Y positioning is going to move, I don't know, the window height, you know, uh, minus or well, the Y positioning from the Y positioning plus... Oh, well, whatever. I'm just going to be grabbing it from the window height minus, I don't know, whatever it was. I don't know, 100. Bottom, yeah. Right. doesn't matter. So the point is, <laughs> you cannot see it because it's too far, far, far down. But as soon as my window is, right, yeah. you know, <laughs> has enough sizing, then you will be able to kind of like see the control. And it's going to move down with the window. So again, yeah, and the, on the, the one side, I have the width, and on the other one, I have the height. Yeah, you were, what, what we, you stopped you in the middle there was you were trying to figure out how to anchor that top part, is that right? To say, right, yes, yeah. Because you want this, in this example, you'd probably have the top stay where it is. Right, exactly. Yeah, gotcha. But basically, as you're seeing, I am able to do this. For, yeah, yeah, so it's reacting to the sizing of the window. But again, you would have to do it manually. Um, there's a lot of math involved sometimes <laughs> because you want to anchor depending on certain things. But Speaking of anchor, and that's yeah. where we talked about this a little the other day. There's there's a couple classes, right? One is yes. anchor, and what was the other one? You attach, 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 and anchor. Yeah, those they're, they are they're very old. But they 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 are uh, very very interesting because you say what you want to anchor. I want to anchor the X positioning. That means that it doesn't matter how I resize my window. That particular thing is going to stay on the uh, X location that I, it has been marked, but then everything else is going to change, like the width and height and everything. So, uh, so it depends what you want to anchor. Um, those functions have been around for a long time, but they're doing this, what I'm doing. They're just tapping into the... Yeah, uh, I, didn't, I didn't tell you this because I almost sent it to you as a joke, but um, I went and looked. I told you I had worked with that class or uh, function years and years ago, and uh, it was actually 10 years ago, roughly, I was in Las Vegas, but what I had forgot, I was using my dad's computer, and the mic was terrible. So the video, I don't know if I should delete the video, but, uh, it was funny. I'm like, wow. But I was, I was using them, and I was, you know, adjusting the the size of GUIs. Size of, you know, exactly. it really isn't rocket science. But if if GUIs are new to you, this GUIs course that's listed above me here, it's it's a rock solid course on learning how to work with GUIs. I mean, it's GUIs are really easy in AutoHotkey. There you go. Cheers. Bye.